you know how when you've made a kit and you look at it and you just think, you know, it's still, it just doesn't look right. Well, I've made this. I followed all the instructions and it still don't make look right. But then that's probably the design of the aircraft itself. It's the Micromere Fanera 2. It looks wrong, but was it a fun build to do? Find out more right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today, indeed, I'm building the Fanera 2 or plywood number 2 in 172nd scale in plastic from Micromir. It's a four-seater general purpose transport aircraft made by the Russians in the 1930s. If you think you're getting hold of one, just want to know what's inside, there's a box opening video already available on the channel. If you would like to know how to put one together because it's in your stash or you've got one on the way, this is very much the video for you. Now, if you like the content, and I hope you do, please remember, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below, please, because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll be notified of all my future projects, the content I produce as it is published and of course if you'd like to give any concrete support to the channel we can do that through super thanks by becoming a channel member or indeed by using any of my online partner programs now this kit was sent to me as a mystery box by nick johnson nick thank you very much indeed my friend i hope you enjoy the build so let's crack on and see how I put together the fanera 2 in one seventy second scale from micromere one, two, three. First thing I'm going to do is put these um, little airfoil sections, if you like, in here. They sort of strengthen the end and, and form the inside wall of the cabin. They are handily labelled as right, and the uh, you can probably just about see there. There we go. That says right as well, so we know we've got the correct ends. And um, one on each side, we'll just glue them in. One on each side, they just glue in like so. Then on each side, the wing just sort of sits on top of those and connects up. Now there's no locating pins on this, so what we're going to do is tape everything and uh, then use some extra thin cement. And just leave this to set overnight. There is this kind of really faint line here that's moulded on. Um, and that's where the crossbar for the seats is supposed to go. So we'll just put that in there. Like that. Oh, let's get it straight. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to start populating the seats. I'll just put them onto the beam here. Put one in the middle. And one either side, right up next to them. There we go. Oh, got in the way rather, didn't I? There's no real way of telling where this instrument panel should go or how high it should sit or anything like that. So I'm just going to guess that it goes about there. Now, we do have um, some instrument parts for this, but I'll deal with those once the panel is set. Three. Okay, I've loaded this up now with some um, MIG one shot um, primer. It's quite gloopy stuff. Let's see how we go. Oh, and there we go. 
excellent oh not a problem it's gone through the brush i can dry it a bit now just with the force from the air which is what i like to do so that's cool that's um primed nicely no problem at all putting just straight mig primer through the airbrush so i'm going to put the instrument panel on the back of the photo etch I'm just dabbing some high viscosity super glue on here what that does is it doesn't go off straight away it takes about 30 seconds to go off to cure it just gives you a little bit of time move the piece around if you haven't got it exactly right which most of the time I haven't, to be fair. Okay, so we then put the instrument panel on the back, like so. Then we can use a craft knife here just to edge it down. If it's just slightly, yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, that'll be fine. So then what we're going to do is wait for that to dry. Dab white paint on the back of here so the white shows through. And then we can put that whole piece into the cockpit. So that then is the cabin finished. As much as we can. As much as I can at the moment anyway. So now we come to the fun part, which is attaching all of the glass here. These two pieces of glass effectively sit together like that, but then they cover this area. So um, what we have to do is at the back here, there's, you can see how this fillet sits into the base there. That's good. And then it's also got to fit into the side of the fuselage section like this then we're going to try and hold it in place and put the other side in okay that's gone a lot better than it normally goes when i've been practicing but we do need to get these to line up properly there's going to be some filling required on the top this look, this spine part here is um isn't clear it's just these windows and a couple of strips at the tops there that are clear. Most of the stuff along the spine isn't, so that can be filled. So what I think we'll do is put one of these in first, maybe just with some polystyrene cement at this end. See, so that's just all I'm going to do for the moment, just put the polystyrene cement on. Then maybe when we've got the other half on, we'll figure out how to do that because I don't want to be like crazing the plastic, the inside of the plastic and get fumes and everywhere. But if we keep the ends open, we should be okay. Let's have a look and see what we do. Three. And before we put the front end in place, what I'm going to do is put in these little floor glass panels because they can help set the position of the top halves. Rear fuselage goes together from just two pieces, like so. And we can put them together with a bit of extra thin cement. Then the rear fuselage sits between these two fillets and joins the back of the main fuselage, like so. And this nose piece goes on the front of your fuselage. And this is going to be essentially the engine mount. The tailplane sits on the back of the fuselage, like so. Then the fin and rudder sit on top of it. Like this. Then we have these full span ailerons come flat just sit onto the back of the wing like this
and on each wing there's this walkway which is a piece of photo etch that needs to be super glued into place I always use for these things I use a high viscosity super glue cyanoacrylate if you will um, this gives me about 30 seconds curing time so it does give you a chance just to iron out any sort of slight issues of where exactly it's going but you know, once it's there it sets just like regular super glue and it stays there's also a range of uh, flap actuators or flap hinges that go on they start the largest ones go in the middle and they go smaller and smaller towards the outside um, they're going to be quite the challenge to put on actually the engine so we've got five cylinder units uh, has the these pipes I, I don't know what these are on something this small I don't think they're exhaust scavengers they might be might be um, coming from the carburetor maybe I don't actually know anyway they're going to be a difficult thing to fit so I will put the I'll put the thing on the center first and then worry about each of the arms a bit afterwards so the center get that glued on first and then I'll worry about everything else then there's uh, this piece goes on the front with these arms you see one of the arms is broken off so I'll probably just try and find a little bit of plastic to stick there to repair it um, otherwise I think these are probably the, the tappets or something like that I don't know, I don't know. anyway um, so a few other little bits and pieces go on the front and then we can put all this together now so I painted the engine uh, the cylinders are burnt iron the uh, front and the tappet lines are uh, steel and the whatever these are at the back are copper and this just sort of slots into the ring here and just get that to sort of sit roughly straight and uh, glue it into place okay the undercarriage is this sort of L shaped frame here rests up against the undercarriage leg itself the undercarriage axle points out Woods. And then that fits onto the spat and the wheel like so the tail skid just slots into place at the back like so we'll paint that white in a moment the engine now and the cowling can go onto the front of the fuselage like so I was going to make a start on the decals now, but as you can see, um, as soon as you look at them, <laughs> put them in water and look at them, let's break into pieces. So I'm going to have to probably mask these off and either paint or spray them on somehow. So quick catch up of where we are. The red line, the red sort of flashes are, have just been masked and brush painted on. There should be more than this, but I really cannot cannot get myself around doing them. The serial on the side here, this is 10 individual pieces of um, lettering taken from a, a sheet of like generic um, REF post-war serials, essentially. Um, there weren't enough C's, so those are zeros that have had the right hand part of the zero cut out. P obviously is P. The L here is an upside down V. It wouldn't be quite this way. It would be more sort of up than across and down. But that's that's Cyrillic as well for an L. So that actually says S S S R then L thirteen oh nine in Cyrillic. Um, that's on obviously on both sides of the aircraft. I have put the piso into the front of the wing here. That will be painted white and the tip silver. Then under the wing tips, there's these, uh, where are they? They go like, like this grab handle thing. 
um, those have got to go on, again they've got to be painted white on the back of the engine you have to try and put these exhaust pipes um, they don't come out of a common exhaust they have individual pipes one from each cylinder and um, there's two that go underneath the out from underneath the aircraft and then this one at the top which carries a three that needs to go on somewhere around here i'm not quite maybe that goes up and this can go up do you know what that's close enough that'll do me that will do me nicely So now we just fit the propeller at the front end, like so. Get a bit of an angle. There we are. And just take off the canopy masks, and we're done. The Fenera 2 then is finished. Um, what can I say about it? It's a it's a strange little kit. The fit of the transparent parts that form the upper half of like two thirds of the body that's problematic it required a lot of filling and sanding filling and sanding filling and sanding to get it flat um the decals were a disaster i haven't used um, any of the original kit ones i've had to cobble them together from other places and then paint on the markings which is why there aren't as many as there are on the box but if you're prepared to put up with that it makes an interesting little kit the fit isn't too terrible um yeah you know, gotta remember this is a kit from 2014 in the ukraine when kits weren't exactly made to the very very highest of standards perhaps unlike today um it's a, a lovely kit though to make i think it's quite intriguing at the end of the day it went together okay and i think it looks actually pretty cool it looks pretty fantastic i have to say certainly going to raise a lot of eyebrows and there's going to be a lot of questions asked when i take it to my club there we go then the fanera 2 it's an odd little thing to be sure but you know what i love odd things as indeed nick knows which is why he very generously sent this to me it's a fun thing to tote to club night i guess and I don't know it's just an amusing side avenue of aviation history that's quite fun to make a few issues with it but you know it's a 2014 kit from ukraine there are an awful lot of kits from that part of the world at that time had issues as well but ultimately i've enjoyed making it if you've enjoyed the video then please do remember there we go then the fanera 2 or plywood number two it's an odd little plane to be sure, but then I love odd little planes. I have a soft spot for the odd in av aviation history, and this was certainly odd. It's a, the concept of the blended wing body is, is quite sensible. I mean, Boeing and Airbus have all been looking into these things as well. But maybe in the 30s, it, was it all that necessary? I don't know. But, you know, 20 or so were made. They operated up in the Arctic. They had floats put on them. They worked. What more do you want out of a plane than it works and they didn't all crash? Anyway, I think it'd be fun to take to the club for people to go, what on earth is that? It'd be a, quite the hoot. I enjoyed building it at the end of the day and really that's what all this is about. So if you've enjoyed the show, and I hope you have, please do remember, Imperial thumbs up on the like button below, please. And because every like counts, and if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published thanks so very much for watching today hope to see you again on the channel soon take very good care now and goodbye <music>